Sports Center on the road is powered by Ford Escape. Be unstoppable. Cubs fans, they have waited 108 years for this night. Now they're taking two of three. In each of their first two series of the season, the Cubs are playing in Chicago for the first time since Game 5 of the World Series and for the first time as World Series champions. Welcome to the best 60 minutes of your day. Coming to you from Chicago with a few hundred of our closest friends here at the hey Cubby guys. Bear. The Chicago Cubs hanging their 2016 World Championship banner tonight. A little rain ain't spoiling this party, That's right? That's right. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Lady, you can't even put it out. No, 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 not at all. Look. Monday Night Baseball on ESPN tonight. Dodgers at Cubs. Alex Wood, John Lester. You think they fired up? They're very fired up. Like you said, nothing is going to soggy these spirits. Because right here in the Cubby Bear, it is lit, to say the least. How y'all doing, World Series champions? I think they're doing OK. a long time for this. I think they're all right. Look, yeah. look, just, just tell us, how does it feel to be number one. I think it's safe to say they own one as they should be. A lot to celebrate. Yeah, we're going to be joined later on by Theo Epstein, Joe Madden. We're going to have a lot of fun on this show and get you caught up on the dance sports. I just got to say, this is a bucket list item for me. I get to cross off. Never <laughs> been to Wrigley. That yep. changes tonight. This is your second time, right? This is my second time here. Unfortunately, we weren't actually inside the stadium, but it's a magical place. It's everything everybody says it is. You haven't lived as a baseball fan until you've been to two places, Cooperstown and Wrigley Field. Well, a lot of Cubs fans spent their whole lives waiting for this moment. Some of them enjoyed it from the great beyond. Yes. Some of them <laughs> never thought they'd see it in this lifetime. But here we are, Cubs, hanging their banner tonight, getting their rings on Wednesday. We'll see if this game is able to be played. Obviously, it's raining outside, so we're inside the Cubby Bear having fun. Let's get to the rest of the dance sports, yep. starting with the Cavaliers, who may play Chicago's Bulls, depending on how things play out. Yeah for the uh -oh. eighth seed. <laughs> so with two games left and tied with Boston for the top seed, the magic number is two. They're at Miami tonight, but the Cavs are resting. LeBron, Kyrie, Tristan Thompson, Kevin Love is questionable. They're saying LeBron and Kyrie have injuries. Right. But we know it's really rest. What do you think about this approach with the number one seed still in play and having basically blown two games against the Hawks over the weekend, the latter of which a 26-point fourth quarter lead, they end up losing that in overtime. What do you think about the Cavaliers choosing to rest as opposed to continue to pursue that number one seed? Uh, I think it says a lot about where they are mentally. Look, everybody has been talking about for weeks, oh, they're going to flip the switch. They're going to be different. And I think we thought maybe last week that they turned the corner, that overtime win against the Pacers. And now they're kind of back to the same old rut. I think this is more than just we're bored before we get to the playoffs. I think this has a lot to do with the fact that this team needs physical rest and they need mental rest. There's no excuse for what happened against Atlanta. No. To lose the 26 Don't talk to me about lead, the referees. Right. It wasn't about the refs. It wasn't about the blown call in terms of Millsap being out of bounds or LeBron getting his sixth foul and getting fouled out. Like, that was a terrible call. Right. But that wasn't the reason you lost the game. They gave up 44 points in the fourth quarter. There is something that cannot be solved with this defense. They may be good enough, maybe underline good enough to get out of the East, but this oh. does not look like a championship team. Oh, somebody's uh, come over to my side. See, I told you, it was never about the King. It was about all the King's men. Right. Let's talk about all the minutes he's playing lately. 43 minutes average over the last five. He's only played, by the way, our man Tom Haberstro tweeted this. 26 minutes total in four appearances in Miami the last two seasons. <laughs> but again, he may see Miami in the playoffs right. if they get that eighth seed over the Bulls who are home to the Magic tonight. But as far as the Cavaliers go, look, it doesn't matter if they're the one or the two seed if they're playing like this. Right. They need to get their minds right. They were resting and relaxing and blowing off some steam at Club Live apparently last night in Miami. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's just about rest, recuperate it, clear your head in the regular season, be as fresh as possible to try to overcome these inherent flaws. Something is wrong with this team. Now, is the rest of the East, they're good. They're better than people give them credit yeah. for, the Celtics, Wizards, and Raptors. Are they good enough, though, to overcome the Cavs? We shall see. But this strikes me as a team that's going to have some serious problems throughout the entire playoffs. I could totally see them messing around and going to a game seven with somebody, a winner-take-all game seven, yeah. and getting shocked. And that's but that the, wouldn't surprise me. That wouldn't surprise me either. And that's the thing that I think we have to get used to with this um, with this track to the finals, if they even get there, is it's going to come, it's going to be a struggle. I, they're going to get tested every single step. 
And look, uh, Boston, I lost a little confidence in them uh, given how they played the Cavaliers the last time in the regular season. I know it's the regular season and there were some different factors, but I think about your Wizards. And I don't know if the Cavs, at the, with the way they're playing, do they really want to run into a team like the Wizards that seem to be playing so confidently right now? Who they now? may not see until the conference finals. Right. This is going to have reverberations throughout the conference because if the Cavs end up the two seed, then that means they would not see the Wizards perhaps until the conference finals as opposed to the first, uh, first or the second round. Right. Well, uh -huh. meanwhile, the other ongoing debate, it seems like it's been this way all season, of course, is the MVP debate between Russell Westbrook and James Harden. James Harden, though, weighed in on what he thought should be the deciding factor in the race. I thought winning was what this was about, period. So I, don't, I mean, I'm not going to get into depth with all that, but I thought winning was the most important thing. And, you know, if you put, set, your team, set your team up, um, in a position to you know, have a chance um, at the ultimate goal, then that's the most important thing. Now, are you okay with James Harden sort of campaigning for himself, reminding people that winning is what matters most? He's not wrong. Like I, and he has a strong enough case for most valuable player, obviously. He also has a legit gripe. See, I think we have to understand the source of the frustration from inside the Rockets organization and on the part of Rockets fans. Two years ago, he got the player's MVP choice, Correct. but not the Associated Press MVP choice because Steph Curry was the best player on the best team. Right. Last year, somehow, with historic statistics, he did not make a single All-NBA team. Right. And now this year, you're saying that his near triple-double stats, the 15-win improvement, perhaps, that they could end up with over last year, having eight more wins at this point than Russell Westbrook's Thunder. Now we're moving the goalposts and saying, well, that's not good enough. It's not about the wins, when that's what they've been told all along. This is about the Rockets as an organization, James Harden as a superstar, and Rockets fans just feeling disrespected and underappreciated. So that's where the frustration is coming from. I believe that Russ has moved ahead in this race right now. Whether he'll get it, we'll talk about that in a second. Well, I do get the frustration, and I understand that if you're him and you put up numbers that are comparable to Russell Westbrook, Absolutely. you may not have broken a record uh, that belonged to Oscar Robertson, but you nevertheless had a fantastic and phenomenal season. Look, better players, historical players, have not won MVP. Yeah. Okay? And it, it still amazes me to this day that Kobe Bryant, he only has one, all right? Shaq, everybody knows what happened with Shaq and Steve Nash, okay? Look, it, it happens, and I'm not saying that that's supposed to make James Harden feel better at night if he doesn't win this, but this is a, as unique of an MVP race I've ever seen. You have somebody who has averaged a triple-double, something that we haven't seen in years. Uh, all the respect that people have for Oscar Robertson, for Oscar Robertson to say he should be the MVP, for the different players to say, to tweet after Russ's last game where he hits a buzzer beater, a 36-footer yeah. yeah. to win the game. Oh, it, it, it feels like, this, is, this is reminds me of what happens in college football. They always tell you it's better to lose early in the season. Right, because that oh, is reverse the timing of the oh, situation. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. Like because you have a lot of distance between an uh, earlier season loss as opposed to lo uh, yeah. losing at the end. You may be just as good, if not better, and lose at the end. But if some another team that's not playing as well as you, if they lost in the beginning, sure. that's all that matters. And this is kind of what is happening in this race. Russell has the style points. He has dramatic wins. He has a record. He has the narrative Here's, now, and I think well, we'll the win thing. the MVP. It's the story, and that's why Houston has a problem with this. That's why you got Daryl Morey tweeting about it, because you're saying, well, wait a second. We thought, if you look at the last 34 MVPs, they've all been from teams in the top three of their respective conference. Right. Now you would take a sixth seed, albeit one that who knows where they'd be without Russell Westbrook. Now you're taking a sixth seed and going to elevate it over a, a, somebody who elevated his team to a contender. Rockets fans are listening to this conversation saying, yeah. wait, you told us our team was terrible. Right. In the offseason, you didn't predict us to do anything. Yeah. Now you're telling us our team is too good, yeah. and Russell's team is much worse than the Rockets. So that's why they have a problem with it, because it feels like the narrative has been shifted to suit a great story, a story that went from what's so amazing about the Westbrook story is it went from an offseason, KD was getting away from him. KD is free from Russ. Russ was holding KD back. Now it's thank you, KD, for unleashing and freeing Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook has become a bit of a people's champion. He's Notice, won the crowd. He did, because he's, he's getting crowd. standing ovations he's got the in Denver. MVP. He's getting Most the MVP chance in Orlando. Yes. And I think that a lot of people have been waiting to kind of embrace this guy and the way that he plays. Look, this is no disrespect to James Harden or his game, but Russell Westbrook 
has a sexy game, okay? All right, and I ain't talking about his clothes. He is a dynamic, explosive athlete. It's, it's style. It's aesthetics. It's, it's a style So here's the thing. Plays. We mentioned that Russell won the crowd. He's got the popular vote, it feels like, right, right now. There's still a lot of undecided out there. What about the, for lack of a better phrase, electoral college? Because when the voters put in their ballot, there's still a lot of love for James Harden because as many have pointed out, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, for Kawhi Leonard. Because yeah. James Harden saying it's about wins. Well, Kawhi, Kawhi has the wins. and defense, and right, if and you want to go both ways. So that's there's true. plenty of people that's going to vote Kawhi very high on their ballot. How many people are going to organize their ballot as such, as such, to where when you add up all the points, it's not necessarily one, two. Right. And it could be an upset based on the way people fill out their ballots, not the way we debate it. Look, Russell is out there like Maximus. Win the crowd, man. You might win his freedom. <laughs> you might win his freedom. Are you not entertained? <laughs> are y'all not entertained? Are y'all having fun? Okay. <laughs> I can barely hear myself thinking. That's the way yes. it should be. Yeah. It's all about the calls tonight. Joe Matt to join the next, ladies and gentlemen. Theo Epstein later on as Sports Center, the sixth, rolls on from the home of the 2016 World, World Champion Champions. Chicago Cubs. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The average adult eats 23 pounds of apples per year and drinks 270 beers per year. Beer plus the crisp taste of apples? Looks like Red's saved everyone a step. Red's Apple Ale. Together, we beer. Well... I love it. This piece is so you. I know, right? I saw it and I was just like, oh, I have to have it. Is it suede? It's suede. Love suede. State Farm knows that for every one of those moments, there's one of these. Well, I love it. This piece is so you. I know, right? I saw it and I was like, I have to have it. Is it suede? It's suede. I love suede. That's why we're there with renter's insurance when things go wrong, but also here with a rewards credit card to help life go right. State Farm. It's Domino's. I have to go. Looking for this? Yeah. Order and track your pizza with Domino's Tracker. Introducing the new QX60 from Infinity. Knowing where you stand has never been easier, except when it comes to retirement. At Fidelity, you get a retirement score in just 60 seconds, and we'll help you make decisions for your plan to keep you on track. It's your retirement. Know where you stand. Our Joseph A. Bank Super Tuesday sale takes up to 70% off almost everything. With travel dress shirts and sports shirts, three for $99. All suits, $199. And all sport coats, $149. Plus, take an extra 40% off all clearance. Only at Joseph A. Bank. It's hard to resist great taste. It has to be hard. What you got? White male, 30s. The place was wiped clean. We don't have any evidence, any witnesses. Perfect crime. Wounds indicate an expertise in killing. Looks military. I think the killer had spec ops training. Do not underestimate him. We gotta know what he knows. You won't see me come until it's over. I wanted to ask you a few questions about my partner, Harry Bosch. Never once did I question whether Harry Bosch was all in. A relationship with Detective Bosch is a bad idea. I know Bosch is lying about something. I can smell it. Harry's a lot of things, but he is not an avenging angel. You think you know someone, then you're not so sure anymore. Center on the road, the six. We are live from Wrigley Field. Uh, well, not quite in the field, Wrigley Field at this point, because unfortunately the weather wouldn't let us be great here on the six. The weather wouldn't let us be there right in Wrigley Field so that Mike could get his first experience inside of Wrigley Field. But we decided to come to a home away from home here at the Cubby. And Jessica 
Mendoza joins us. Jessica, who's calling the game tonight. Yes. Cubs, Dodgers, yes. you seem really tight. You seem really I don't so know. Excited. These fans. about this if you think about the world series and how it ended in cleveland and the fact that these fans didn't get the chance to really celebrate on the field with the team and the fact that the banner is being raised i just like joe madden he says he likes the banner being raised more than the rings wow they get a chance to share it with all these people i mean yeah. that's what it's about yeah what's the electricity been like around the city since you've been here you know i think it's been more of just this like finally and, yeah. and even talking to the players, the biggest thing that people mention is, is family, which is interesting, how it's connected, whether it's like relatives that have gone on or family members from that are flying in. I mean, you walk around and it's like you just see so much of a connection to this team. Now, it, it has certainly been hard for any team in Major League Baseball to repeat. Very few teams have done it. Um, but we have a feeling that if anybody can figure this out, it can probably be Joe Madden, right? The master motivator, and he joins us now on the six. Uh, Joe, you're right there in the dugout. Thank you so much for joining me, Michael Smith, Jessica Mendoza. So how does it feel? Today's the day. You're raising the banner. You're opening your home season or your first home game as a World Series champ. How does that feel? Oh, it feels pretty good. I'm always, uh, I think you've already alluded to it. I love the banner raising component of all of this. Uh, to come here to Wrigley, the first uh, World Series banner raised at this ballpark with our fans in this beautiful ballpark. Uh, everything uh, put together, man, it's a pretty special night. What are you going to tell your players before Nothing. the game tonight? Nothing. I, I don't do that stuff. <laughs> I, have, I, have, uh, I have a meeting in spring training. I'll have a meeting at the All-Star break, and I'll have a meeting before the first uh, playoff game. Our guys get it. They don't need me to get to fill their heads with a lot of uh, BS, actually. Uh, baseball, we play every night. It's not like a football game you play once a week. It's not like basketball a couple nights a week. Uh, the less they hear from me, the better off they are. If I have to interject normally, it's, it's something, um, you know, that uh, occasionally I might get upset, but that's really on, on a very uh, few and far between. So for the most part, I, I leave that in the hands of the coaches. Uh, our guys know how to deal with situations. There has been so much talk about last year, and obviously tonight will be a huge celebration. But how much is part of this team also wanting to be about this year's team and kind of moving forward with a lot of that? Yeah, I think uh, tonight and then the ring ceremony on Wednesday will be the um, uh, appropriate time to turn the page. I think at that point, after we get by the rings, uh, the guys will really truly be able to focus on this year. Although 4-2 and two is not a bad start to the season, a uh, really awkward road trip in St. Louis where you're playing then a day off, playing in a day off, you're in a hotel nearly a week, uh, lose the first game in Milwaukee and come back and win the next two. And that's after playing two games in Houston. So our guys are pretty focused already. If you had attended our spring training, you would not have known that we won the World Series last year. Our guys just go about their business in such a professional way. But I think ceremoniously speaking, I think after the ring ceremony, we'll be able to move it along. Now, will you do something as significant as lead the Cubs to a World Series, breaking a, a curse that you heard about a billion times. You naturally become the mastermind, uh, the mentor, uh, not just in baseball, but outside of sports. Now, Dabo Sweeney, he called upon you to give his team a pep talk before the title game. How does it feel now that other coaches are looking at you as somebody that can help them lead their team regardless of what sport they're in? It's flattering, uh, quite frankly. You know, I did the talk to Dabo. I did a nice little video from my office down in uh, Tampa to send it to his team. There's actually been other coaches, actually NFL coaches that I've checked in uh, quite a bit during the course of the offseason. It is flattering. It's also interesting, and it also makes me better at what I do because when you have to verbalize your thoughts to somebody else, it absolutely um, galvanizes them even further within your own mind. And then to get their feedback, too. Listen, these are really successful people that have a lot of great thoughts themselves. So... I really, it's flattering. I appreciate them reaching out. I've had great conversation with several different coaches and uh, continue to move forward. I'm trying to learn myself. Well, Joe, I was, I was kicking it with, Joe, with, with Ben Zobras before the game. We were talking about 2006, your first year managing. Yeah. 101 losses. It was his first year in the bigs. You guys learned a lot that year. Has there been a lot of reflection? Obviously, you're winning it all, but when you think back just 11 years ago where you were at as a manager, to where you're at right now. 
Um, I, I don't really necessarily do it in that manner. I knew where I was in 2006. I mean, I knew the kind of team that we had. I also knew the methods that I felt were the right ones to incorporate because I'd been doing it for a while. And I thought, I think it was like 51 maybe when I got the job. I thought I put the appropriate amount of time in to figure out my craft. So even though we lost that many games, it didn't injure my my confidence. I just knew what we had going on. Uh, and I also felt given the, the right opportunity and also getting the right guys in the mix, eventually we could turn it around, which we did in 2008. And then it's been, it was pretty good after that. And then the last couple of years here have been magnificent. So uh, my boys are walking by me right here. So I, it's, I really feel fortunate that I did not get a chance to manage when I was 40 years of age. I'm, it's really cool that you're, I never wanted anything to happen to me before it was my time to have it happen to me. And it really, uh, the fact that I had to wait till I was 51 to manage in the big leagues is really, um, that really signifies that to me very well. Hey, Joe, I know you, uh, you want your guys, I've, I've seen you say, well, you're hoping your guys embrace this night, soak it in, take mental snapshots of everything. Uh, the ballpark has undergone some remodeling, if you will. You got the, uh, the bullpen beneath the bleachers, uh, a lot of upgrades at Wrigley. How do you feel about this new era in Cubs baseball that's really being ushered in starting tonight? Uh, I love it. I love all the, the uh, capital improvements that are made to the building. I also love the fact that it really pretty much um, maintains the original uh, edifice, the original structure, the original feel of the entire building. Uh, I just think the improvements, whether it's the scoreboards, uh, putting the uh, bullpens under the stands, eventually the club level and underneath, uh, I think that's going to be next year, our clubhouse itself in the plaza, man. That is an outstanding uh, contribution uh, uh, to the rest of this whole uh, setting right here. So I, I think the Ricketts family has done a wonderful job of maintaining the past and building into the future. I think our fans have to love every second of it. Everything blends together so well. I know when I drive up, uh, I'm really impressed. I'm, I've been impressed from day one. It keeps getting better if that's possible. But give the Ricketts family a lot of uh, credit for uh, the work that they've done here. Now, I know a lot has happened to you, uh, Joe, since you... I know a lot has happened to you, Joe, since since uh, you've been... You've won this uh, World Series championship. A lot of different experiences, a lot of congratulations, I'm sure. What has been your favorite memory uh, since winning the world title? Uh, the parade. The parade and standing on stage, and uh, I, I reference it as Cup Stock. I had recently, before that, watched the uh, Woodstock uh, documentary, and uh, Richie Havens walking on the stage in the beginning of Woodstock, and what that looked like, and I thought what it felt like, and then eventually get off the bus, go to the stage at Grand Park there, and jump up there, and it was like, wow. Uh, what, a, what an incredible feeling and moment. Um, I got a really good picture there from uh, Steve Green, our team photographer, and I really, that's the one thing I want to keep. It's uh, taken from behind me looking out at the group. Uh, that's really special, man. That's to try to wrap your mind around that. All those folks are there because we had won. And then you get this chance to stand up there and address them. Uh, really, in, in anybody's life, about as significant as it possibly can get. So I feel very fortunate about that. And that's the one thing that stands out to me, standing up there, being able to look out at Cubstock, and then being able to talk to the folks. One of the coolest things, when I just look at your lineup, Joe, um, I was just sitting with Dave Roberts in his office, and he, he pulled up the lineup, kind of talking about how he's going to mix and match, and he looks at just Schwarber, Bryant, Rizzo right off the top. I know it's not traditional to have a guy like Schwarber at the top, but what does that do for your lineup and, and the decision that kind of went behind having him at the top? Well, I've talked about it all year pretty much, that if Schwarber's not hitting there and he's not hitting with those guys behind him, nobody's going to pitch to him at all. And then furthermore, just like you said, David said, when the lineup's sent over and they see those three guys at the top, that's kind of disconcerting. I know that from the other side. I remember the back in the days with the Red Sox, especially in the Yankees. So it's tough. It's tough when you see those three names at the top of the batting order. And yeah, as a manager, what you start doing immediately is looking at the, the, the latter part of the game, bullpen-wise, and how you're going to match this thing up. And it's never a comfortable feeling. So I, I like the fact that our guys do have that uh, imposing kind of a method about them at the top of the batting order. We're unique in that situation. What are they, like 24, uh, 24, and like maybe 27 years of age? That's the really cool part. And then Zoe's the guy long in the tooth, and after that comes Ed, uh, Addison and Wilson Contreras, both less than 25. Uh, Hayward, 27 today. Uh, Baez, 23, 24. So when you look at our lineup, man, it's, it's, we won a World Series, and everybody kept talking about how good we were last year. We were good. 
But for me, it was about, man, this is pretty solid with the, the lack of experience, how young these guys are to be considered that good, and then go ahead and culminate in a World Series victory. And the biggest thing right now is to channel it properly, keep working and moving it forward, and have all the faith in the world in a, that our guys will do that. Well, Joe Madden, we appreciate you joining us on Sports Center. We don't have to tell you to enjoy the night. We know you have it all in perspective, and good luck the rest of the way in defending your World Series title. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for having us on, and enjoy the evening yourself. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, will do. What's so, interesting about this squad, and you talk about the lineup, and now you got Jason Hayward off to a pretty good start. Small sample size, obviously, but off to a pretty good start. So you got the pitching. You got the hitting. You got the camaraderie. You have the chemistry. It's like, barring catastrophic injury, what would stop this team from being right there to well, repeat that, again? That's what I Complacence think, is not but, an issue. Well, that's what I think it's kind of fun about tonight, because I have the one team that, and if any team that can stop the Cubs, is the Dodgers. Yeah. And I think that that's Oh, you mean somebody early. else is here tonight? I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's this <laughs> Yeah, from, they're from L.A. Well, yeah. I'll tell you a little bit about their background. Yeah. And, I mean, this is a team that you got to remember, their season ended right here in Chicago. There's a lot of that going on. And you think about before the game, they got to sit there and look at the banner being raised of something that was taken away from them. And they were leading that series. They had a really good chance of stopping the greatest team, one of the greatest teams of winning. So I think that the Dodgers are going to be a big competition for yeah. them. But you're right. Cubs are looking good, especially okay. this time around. So the well, Cubs are your, that's your pick to, you no, think they're going to repeat? I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make it out of here alive, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I have the Dodgers. I have yeah. the Dodgers Whoa. stopping the Cubs. Do you really? Oh, they're gonna get me. They're gonna get well, look, it's no accident that John Lester is pitching tonight right. because they struggle with lefties. So if they can start to hit against lefties, you might be right. Oh, so but. tonight, tonight, I do. I mean, you think about the matchup. And the fact that Rich Hill went down for the Dodgers, I mean, that was a huge loss. But John Lester, oh, is yeah. he fun to pitch, especially against the Dodgers lineup. All right. Look at you. You're making enemies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no we got plenty more to come on the six. <laughs> Theo Epstein is going to join us next. We're going to try to get Jessica out of here in one piece. <laughs> Don't leave her alone. You look beat, Butchie. Up late watching the games? Daughter was out late. It's hard not to worry about your teen driver out on the road. Liberty Mutual lets you leave worry behind. I heard they offer 24-hour roadside assistance. Saw it in a commercial once. He'll figure it out. Liberty stands with you. Liberty Mutual stood with me when this guy got a flat tire in the middle of the night, so he got home safe. <sighs> yeah, my dad says their insurance doesn't have that. What? You can leave worry behind when Liberty stands with you. Liberty Mutual Insurance. There is a truth and it's on our side Dawn is coming, open your eyes I will stay with you tonight Hold you close to the morning light I'd like to drive a hybrid car, but I'm not sure it's for me I don't need kale, and I never hugged a tree. Oh. I'd like to drive a hybrid car, but I'm not sure it's for me. Lawn mower engines, no cargo room, and crappy batteries. I just want to drive a good-looking whip with really great MPGs. You know, the world didn't need another hybrid. It needed a better hybrid. Introducing the Hyundai Ioniq, the most fuel-efficient car in America. It's not carbonation. Those bubbles are celebrating. Right now, get $1 any size soft drink only at McDonald's. Every time it's too nice out to be a work day, but Corona gets its line. And every time you decide a Tuesday should feel like a Saturday, but Corona gets its line. Every time you've got a view like that, or every time the best seat in the house isn't in the house. Every time the stars come out to play, or you dance the night away, a Corona gets its line. And every time you put that away, a Corona gets its line.
NBA playoffs on ESPN. Attention Medicare beneficiaries. Many people with Medicare may be able to get extra benefits and don't even know they're available. You may be able to get dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage included in your plan. The Medicare Coverage Helpline is accepting calls to see if you're eligible to enroll now. You may be able to get extra benefits including dental, vision, and prescription drug coverage. Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Buckwald. Making sure you go to the doctor and taking all your medications as prescribed can help protect your health. To make it easier, you may now be able to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan that includes coverage for dental, vision, and prescription drugs. Help protect your health by choosing the right plan for you and get all the benefits you deserve. Call to see if you may be able to get extra benefits, including dental, vision, and prescription coverage. Don't delay. Call to see if you're eligible to enroll and may be able to get extra benefits now. Call 800-319-0527. That's 800-319-0527. To understand who I am, you must be conscious of my upbringing. For I have withstood the test of time. May I have this dance? I politely asked destiny. My question was met with no reply, but by actions. From black cats and billy goats to Bartman and Gonzalez, my answer was clear. Not yet, destiny had replied. Tears flooded Clark and Addison to Sheffield and Waveland. But I carried on. Held up not just by beams, concrete, and ivy-covered brick walls, but by optimism and hope that my time would come. And then it did. I watched from afar and listened to euphoric chants with resounding jubilation. And the Cubs have won the World Series! Destiny leaned over to me and said, I'm here now. And I intend to stay. Welcome back to Sports Center. We're here at the Cubby Bear outside Wrigley Field. About to hang the Cubs 2016 World Series champion banner. We are joined now by Chicago Zone, Sarah, CSPN Zone, Sarah Spain. Sarah Spain. She needs no introduction around these parts. You've been waiting for this your whole life. But hundreds we of are joined now on the six by the architect of the World Series champion Chicago Cubs. Theo Epstein is with us. Uh, Theo, thanks for joining the six, man. When's the last time you bought a meal or paid for a drink in Chicago? <laughs> Uh, they, they've been good to me this winter for sure, but you know after 04 in Boston They said you'd never pay for a meal there ever again And we lost the first two games in the next season to the Yankees and we were paying full freight So hopefully we can keep this one going a little longer So what does tonight feel like for you as Mike mentioned you are the architect of this uh, You broke this curse another curse. So what does tonight feel like for you? I'm not sure exactly what it's going to feel like. I just want to be open to all different kinds of emotions and see what happens. But, you know, the best part about last year was we all got to be part of something bigger than ourselves. And that made the whole month of October so emotional, so cathartic for so many people. And we, were, we felt so connected with everyone, with the players, with the fans, with the city of Chicago. So I'm sure when the banner goes up tonight, it's going to bring back all those feelings of connectedness and pride and joy and redemption and, and getting to be part of something bigger than ourselves again and we look forward to that. Theo, you uh, promised everyone you would go on an at least month-long bender after the <laughs> World Series win. Now I know you did that. What I'm wondering is when you decided it came to an end, was that because you had to go back to work or because your body said it was a physical impossibility <laughs> to keep it going? Yeah, my liver told me it was time to go back to work. No, we had, we had a good time. We had, uh, we had to Mix in a lot of work this offseason trying to put the 2017 team together too, but it was easy to celebrate in Chicago, man. The, every, every single person in the city was in just such a great mood the whole winter, and we had a really good time. And then when we got to spring training, we kind of turned the page knowing that we were going to have a couple nostalgic moments like tonight and, and Wednesday night. But, uh, yeah, it was a blast to celebrate and see everyone in such a great mood, and, you know, we hope we can keep this team together for a while and do our share of winning and keep a smile on everybody's faces, but I made that one count. <laughs> hey, Theo, I'm holding Fortune Magazine in my hand, of course. I know how you felt about being named the world's greatest leader uh, by Fortune Magazine. You told Buster Orney you can't get your dog to stop peeing in the house, <laughs> but I'm wondering, 
How have you uh, looked at yourself, looked in the mirror this offseason? Because you're the type of person that's never satisfied, that's never complacent, hence your team isn't complacent. In what areas do you feel like you can still grow and evolve as a leader and a manager of people when it comes to that connectedness and that opting in again for your team this year? I hope Fortune sold a lot of magazines because I've gotten more grief for that than anything that, that ever <laughs> happened to me. Um, no, I, I think, well, first of all, you know, managing the success, managing the fact that we won and, and, and trying to make sure we all stay, stay hungry and don't get complacent, that's the first obvious challenge. And then articulating a vision for what we're trying to do now that we've accomplished the obvious goal. But, you know, we have such a unique opportunity here. Uh, it's hard these days in baseball to keep a group together for a long period of time. And we have a chance to keep this core together for, you know, at least the next five years. And there's such a connection, such attachment with the fans and these players and the players amongst themselves. And we have a chance if, if, if uh, we all do our jobs the right way and stay hungry to do a lot of winning. So that's really the goal is to maximize this window that we have with championships. And, and we've got one, uh, but we're not satisfied with that. We want to win as many as we can and, and, you know, keep these Cubs fans happy and keep this team together as long as we can. I know you try to stay humble, but there's a real risk in achieving the two goals that you have in Boston and Chicago and becoming someone that people don't want to challenge. Do you feel comfortable that you've surrounded yourself with enough people who are willing to say no to you or say that's not the guy and that you'll listen to them still? Oh, oh uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this whole thing was, a, was just an organization-wide effort. You know, I think the way we run our front office is... Um, almost like a boiler room where we, there's such uh, such dissonance and lots of discussion about any one decision and we challenge each other uh, to explain why we feel a certain way and we want people to, to push us and challenge us. How do we know something's true? Why do you like this guy? Uh, how do we know this is information we can really rely upon? How do we know we're getting to the right decision? And I think that's always going to be the case around here. We've got such great people in the front office and uh, they all feel so great about being Cubs and working here that uh, we owe it to the organization and to each other to continue to push ourselves. And there's no, no yes men around here. <laughs> well, Theo, we, uh, we've seen you say that you're seeing the opposite of complacency when it comes to your team so far through spring training and so far in the season. That certainly starts at the top. So congratulations on all your success. We know you're turning the page, but enjoy tonight. And thanks yeah. for joining the six. We will. Sounds like you guys are having a better time there than we are. So I'll, I'll come join you for one. But thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Have a good time tonight. All right. Hey, come First join us if you want. You, come join right, us. I'll be we right, know you're I'll not be right Come join us if you're free. Exactly. <laughs> thanks, guys. All right. Well, thank you we got more to come on the six. I am told yep. that Eddie Vedder is in the dugout at Wrigley. So basically so me and Sarah upset. have to be here by ourselves. You're about to take off. Is that I need to go to, to I need to go to Wrigley. <laughs> I got to meet Ed. I just want to scream hello. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, God, it's been so long. <laughs>
I'll keep that in mind. Better Call Saul, season premiere tonight at 10, only on AMC. At Old Dominion, we ship everything you can imagine. And everything we ship has something in common. Whether it's expedited overnight, or shipped around the globe. It's handled by OD employees who know that delivering freight means delivering promises. OD, helping the world keep promises. Brian, I just need to know if the customer app will be live Monday. Can we at least analyze customer traffic? Can we push the offer online? Brian, I, I just had a quick question. Brian. Bri Brian. Bri Legacy technology can handcuff any company. But yes is here. You're saying the new app will go live Monday? Yeah. With help from HB, we can finally work the way we want to. With the right mix of hybrid IT, everything computes. When you let the tension build for 108 years, the celebration needs to be once in a lifetime. Watch the Cubs raise their championship banner at Wrigley. Dodgers, Cubs, tonight at 8 on E. If you have moderate to severe ulcerative colitis or Crohn's, and your symptoms have left you with the same view, it may be time for a different perspective. If other treatments haven't worked well enough, ask your doctor about Intivio, the only biologic developed and approved just for UC and Crohn's. Antivio works by focusing right in the GI tract to help control damaging inflammation and is clinically proven to begin helping many patients achieve both symptom relief as well as remission. Infusion and serious allergic reactions can happen during or after treatment. Intivio may increase risk of infection, which can be serious. While not reported with Intivio, PML, a rare serious brain infection caused by a virus, may be possible. Tell your doctor if you have an infection, experience frequent infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Liver problems can occur with Intivio. If your UC or Crohn's medication isn't working for you, ask your gastroenterologist about Intivio. Intivio, relief and remission within reach. Ow. All right. All right. Hey, we cannot, we'd be remiss if we didn't shout out Sergio Garcia. Yeah. First major in 74 attempts. Somebody who was so mocked, ridiculed, loathed. He said himself, I don't have what it takes to win a major. Yes. It, it was hard not to be a Sergio fan down the stretch yesterday. It was, and this is an unusual story in the sense, like, this is not your typical uh, kind of feel-good story in some respects, because for a lot of years, a lot of people have been very critical of him. And they, rightfully so. And rightfully so. Respects, I mean, yeah. he brought a lot of that criticism on himself, thinking he's been a little too cocky, uh, a little too arrogant, and then all of a sudden he wins it. But I think a lot of people generally felt good yeah. for him. Like Cubs fans, you hated the wait, but it made it that much sweeter. I hope this opens up floodgates for him. Yeah. To get a I do too. Yeah. Said, I hope this is a, the first of many. Who knows? All right, Lakers won their fourth straight thanks to a buzzer beater by uh, D'Angelo Russell, a three-pointer who wasn't expecting to play Sunday after finding out his grandmother passed away. It's a great moment. I found out my granny was dead this morning, man. That's tragic. That's God's hands, man. I can't. I can't really control that. That's God making that shot. That shot was for my granny, man. I, I wasn't even gonna play tonight. My granny was young, young, strong black woman. She raised my dad, my dad raised us, and he raised four beautiful men. And shout out to everybody, man. This is, this is crazy. All right, that was... That was a tremendous yeah, moment. Yeah, that was obviously And even though, happened. if you're a Laker fan, you hate that your odds of being in the top three could yeah. decrease, this might just be the right way to tank. Play the game. Don't upset the basketball guys. Yeah. And in the meantime, a young man was able to honor his late grandmother. Yeah, and it, and it feels, um, I know for Laker fans, probably a lot of them can't help but to be to be selfish in that moment because we know every win, what it means, unfortunately, for their chances of protecting that top three pick. Yeah, so. let the balls fall where they may. Let them fall yeah. away, where they may in the balls as well. The ball was falling in the hoop a lot for Damian Lillard yes. Saturday. <laughs> 59 points, just missed 60. Franchise high, which is saying a lot for that franchise. A lot of great players have come through there. Damian Lillard continues to prove uh, to be the star that he is. Locked into that A spot, gets another shot at the Warriors again. Yeah, it does. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that, that series plays out. But more importantly, I thought from this night is that Damian Lillard selflessly 
decided to give the game ball That's to great. Joe Johnson, Very who has scored 20,000 points. Very That's classy. a guy when you think about uh, somebody scoring 20,000 points, like you, you never think about Joe Johnson, but it obviously makes perfect sense given how long and how consistent, consistently that he's played in this league. I thought that was a, a great moment. Right. For you're him. in your moment and you're thinking about somebody else. It's a yeah, great life. It says a lot about who Damian Lillard is. Right. Um, Mavericks do things right a lot. <laughs> they do a great job. They honor their own. It's fun to see Tony Romo be a Maverick for a night. I think it's tomorrow night. He's going to be in full uniform. Yeah. Karan Butler said he could have hooped in real life. Yeah. Everybody talks about what a great athlete. Mark Spears was on the show yes. with us the other day. What a great athlete Romo is in general. He doesn't look the part. Right. But when he gets on the hoop, he got some well, skills. Well, that's what he said is uh, Marcus Spears is that he had, like, uh, he has such a bad-looking body. Yeah. That he's the best bad-looking athlete ever. Right. So. He's like the NFL's Billy Hope. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> exactly. he's that guy. Well, look, Dallas is really uh, not just, obviously, not the Mavericks, but the city itself. I thought it was also so a good moment or a nice moment when they put up, they flashed up the number nine on downtown Dallas yes. buildings. And this is just like a, a, a good way uh, for him to continue to go out and be celebrated. Wondering when that moment comes for him at, at Cowboy Stadium. Yeah. So earlier today, we thought we might be leading the show with a perfect game. When Michael Pineda was oh, yeah. perfect, I believe, through six. We we're like, uh oh, we gotta rip up the rundown. The Cubs might take a back seat. And then Martha Stewart had to go dumb <laughs> joking. Of course. Don't be one of those people. No, of it wasn't course Martha, not. it wasn't Martha's fault. It's just too easy. It is. I love how she thought she was breaking news. Like, he's got a perfect game going. Like it's the game he's home over. Everybody knows this. But no, there's no jinx involved. Look, this this just in, okay? Curses, that, that superstitious stuff, it's not real, all right? Yeah. And it doesn't mean anything if somebody who's not an announcer. Right. That makes that observation. And Evan Longoria, he tends to get hit. Right. It happens, you exactly. know what I mean? I was like, if you make that observation as an announcer, you're good. Now, while that was going on in the greatest city in the world, <laughs> in the greatest city in the world, you know what's going on in San Francisco? They were getting ready for the Schuyler Sisters from Hamilton no to way. sing the national anthem. Angelica, Eliza, and Peggy. They're the jerseys and everything. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, anytime I get a Hannah Hamilton reference in the show, you know I'm going to do it. I, I, I understand. Because that's all we listen to at my yeah, house. Yeah, I mean, it was, obviously, we got a chance to see it. We didn't see it when the original cast. We saw it here. Uh, yeah. Yes, we saw it in Chicago. We saw it, I guess, off-Broadway. I can only imagine, as good as the performance that we saw here, I can only imagine what it was like uh, to see the original cast. Nevertheless, look, that's taken nothing away from the performance we saw here, which yeah. was life-changing. The Giants get it. I heard Wayne Brady just finished his run in Chicago. <laughs> Again, we are in Chicago for ESPN's Monday Night Baseball. Cubs home opener, 8 o'clock tonight. Weather permitting, obviously. Alex Wood, John Lester. Should be great. Should be an electric night at Should Wrigley Field. First time they've ever come home to Wrigley yeah. as world champions. And tomorrow, see. don't forget to check out First Take on 10 to noon on ESPN as you can catch Max, Molly, and Stephen A. every single day. <laughs> These fans have not Boy, lost with Sarah coming up. steam at all. Y'all are the real MVPs right now. For the first time in 108 years, the Chicago Cubs are World Series champions. Introducing the new QX60 from Infinity. I don't take breaks, I'm rebuilding. I'm rebuilding. Blow up on the track, reinventing. <laughs> Had to build it back, now I'm better. Come and see our remodeled stores when you carry out large three topping pizzas for $7.99 each every day. I'm Val, the orange money retirement squirrel from Voya. I represent the money you save for the future. Who's he? He's the green money you can spend now. What's up? He's gonna pay some bills, maybe buy a new tennis racket. He's got a killer backhand. When it's time to get organized for retirement, it's time to get Voya. Jorge Burgos has a fighting spirit. When he started at Modelo, he washed kegs in the cellar. He mastered that job. He learned how to ferment and filter. He mastered that job. Over time, Jorge mastered everything about making Modelo Especial and Modelo Negra. He also learned that it doesn't matter what you know if you don't pass that knowledge on. Since 1925, our brewmasters have continued our tradition of brewing the model beer. Modelo, brewed with a fighting spirit.
Billy Goat Ruffians. Seen it? Covered it. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Our Joseph A. Bank Super Tuesday sale takes up to 70% off almost everything. With travel dress shirts and sports shirts, three for $99. All suits, $199. And all sport coats, $149. Plus, take an extra 40% off all clearance. Only at Joseph A. Bank. Everybody has a best. At Massage Envy, we're here to help you find yours. That's why we're welcoming new clients with a $50 massage or facial session. Call today. Massage Envy. Making the best of everybody. What if I told you? They're ruining college basketball. They're embracing this one and done. There's a thin line between love and hate. You're going to hate me. Why? But guess what? If I do right by them, they'll win. ESPN Films presents One and Not Done, Thursday at 9 on... If you have moderate to severe ulcerative colitis or Crohn's, and your symptoms have left you with the same view, it may be time for a different perspective. If other treatments haven't worked well enough, ask your doctor about Antivio, the only biologic developed and approved just for UC and Crohn's. Antivio works by focusing right in the GI tract to help control damaging inflammation and is clinically proven to begin helping many patients achieve both symptom relief as well as remission. Infusion and serious allergic reactions can happen during or after treatment. Intivio may increase risk of infection, which can be serious. While not reported with Intivio, PML, a rare serious brain infection caused by a virus, may be possible. Tell your doctor if you have an infection, experience frequent infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Liver problems can occur with Intivio. If your UC or Crohn's medication isn't working for you, ask your gastroenterologist about Intivio. Intivio, relief and remission within reach. All right, there is Theo Epstein talking to the media. He just spoke to us moments ago. Mike is still jealous that Eddie Vedder is hanging out with Theo Epstein in the Cubs dugout. One day, Mike, one day you'll meet Eddie Vedder, right? And I know when you do meet Eddie Vedder, you're probably officially going to be doing too much, as we're about to do right now. Because it's time for the Doing Too Much countdown, which does still live on the road, no matter yes. what. And we start off with probably the story of the day. United Airlines, they're under a ton of fire right now Deserving. after they forcibly removed the passenger from their seat on a, a flight that was departing from Chicago on Sunday. The flight was to Kentucky, overbooked. They picked four random people. And this guy, they had to drag out the United CEO, Oscar Munez. He has released a statement calling it an upsetting event. But nevertheless, I know, right, among, among many things it was, uh, our man Joe Thomas of the Browns, he tweeted what I thought was a perfect tweet. Dear United, I had to reaccommodate someone, too. And there was a picture of him uh, folding somebody, essentially. But this is just a, a ridiculous situation. Very embarrassing for United Airlines. So to, I mean, to treat another human being like like cattle yeah under the guise of transporting you know your employees like this is a better way to do it to treat people in general but that's just bad business it just escapes me how somebody could do something that inhumane and that stupid yeah so our uh, man miles garrett he was making the rounds today on campus um did a lot of shows one show he didn't do uh was mike and mike because he had an issue uh with the way that booger mcfarland has criticized his game in the past so he decided to skip on that one he did of course find time to uh, bench press field Yates at some yeah. point. Uh, but nevertheless, though, skipping out on an interview because of criticism. Does it's, that, a ba it's a bad look. It's a bad look. It's yeah. a bad, and I'm not just saying that, like, you know, look, obviously it's a college. You ESPN. Right. You know, thanks for coming, but it's a bad look. That's bad advice. Confront Booger McFarland, talk to him one on one, and maybe turn it into a situation where you might be able to learn from him. Booger played in the league a long time. Right. Yeah, talk I mean, that, that to me would have been a better way not, to handle not, it. That's not, that criticism is not exclusive to Booger, right? Correct. Because, right. look, he won't be the last person that criticizes him. Speaking of criticism, LaShawn McCoy went off on Kiko Alonso, as people recall. Uh, LaShawn McCoy was traded from Buffalo for Kiko, or traded to Buffalo uh, for Kiko Alonso, who wound up going to Philly. And my man was savaging Kiko Alonso, who posted this photo of him kind of working over LaShawn McCoy, yeah. savaged him in his Instagram comments. That's my 2011 money, he said about <laughs> his new contract. That was so good. Like, my chest hurt. I was like, ooh, that's so about cold. First world problems, number one. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know, I'm telling you. They're talking about contracts now. Yeah, no. 
I mean, look, that's the new thing these days is like going into somebody's Instagram mentions and just lighting them up. Right. Hello, Joel Embiid, who is good at doing right. that, too. Right, Sun Celtics, exactly. <laughs> come on, LaShawn, it's all good. All yeah, of y'all no, are paid. Uh, I'm sure. Now, some NFL players got to come out of their pockets for some fines yeah. for an arm wrestling event that they were part of in Vegas. The yeah. same NFL is moving the team to Vegas. That NFL? The problem no. is they were going to ask for forgiveness and not permission. Since they didn't get it cleared, or so the league says, now they got to come up with some fines. All I know is if they didn't all turn their hats backward, like Stallone and over the top. Winner takes it all. Oh, over the top. Loser takes Underrated. the ball. Great bad movie. I'll watch that every, great bad it's not movie. even bad. No, it's, no, no, it's not oh, bad. It's a great bad movie. Though. It is it's, not it's a bad different. movie. Just say great movie. No, no, Mike. Great bad movie. Mike. <laughs> Mike. Mike. I love you, Mike. <laughs> and of course, number one, get your boy Emmett Auto Smith. Get number one, autocorrect. Get your boy Emmett. Way to persevere through a varsity. You think autocorrect got him? Nah, man. <laughs> I, I love him, but he all, uh, he loses the benefit of the doubt because of blowed up. Blowed up and also rights of passion. Right. <laughs> but that's still my man, though. That's a, look, still my man. One of the greatest running backs all to make ever mistakes. do it. Look, 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 players mess up. We exactly. can't all be great at grammar. It's you just the way I mean? it works, it right? It happens. <laughs> all right, that's it for doing too much. We're going to show you an excerpt from our We the Fan series coming back. Who better to talk to about the Cubs hanging their championship banner no. than super fan Sarah Spain of ESPN? So. <laughs> More from the six, from the shy, after this. Mike's a pretty big sports nut. So when he agreed to have his wedding in October, he knew the Bears would be playing. But I don't know if he knew the Cubs would still be playing too. What? With the Cubs now in the NLCS, there is a very good possibility that there could be a game six against the Dodgers the night of our wedding uh, on October 22nd. I thought your mom was sitting there. Yeah, and then I moved her. All right, we need to rearrange that then. Because we can't have my parents sitting here yeah, and but your mom here. Why? Brides have a lot of things to think about planning a wedding. Everybody knows that. But Mike, as the groom, my man just had one concern. If it's the clincher for the Cubs to go to the World Series on that night, I think we're going to find a way to, to get a TV and, and, and celebrate if they win that game. My wedding day is a huge part of my life. And if Mike is watching the Cubs game, I already said I'd be very, 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 very angry. We might get married and then the next day not be married anymore. Sarah Spain is back with us. The We The Fan series. Yeah. Uh, just what's it like for you? Well, I mean, I think it's cool because it's shot super beautifully. And as you can see from visiting my city, it is the best city in the world. So people will get to see that. But also, it combines things that a lot of us love, which is like drama and salacious, gossipy kind of insight into people's lives, right. plus sports. Mm. Well, what I loved, you just got married, so you understand yeah. the wedding planning stress so I, I can't wait to find out how that plays out with game yeah. six on the same night as oh the wedding. my gosh the previews you could see people at the wedding on their phones watching the game and i'm like listen if you love sports that much you already know you're not going to get we had everything mapped out there was no <laughs> chance that any major game was going to interfere with our wedding or our honeymoon like wow. we were like ready for all of it wow now you tom waddle Bill Barnwell, you guys are also doing podcast after yeah. after every after after every episode yeah. and a reunion podcast. Yeah, right? I'm gonna get my Andy Cohen on. Yeah, I'm gonna be holding people back. <laughs> I'm gonna be like catching weaves. It's gonna be awesome. No. What's tonight gonna be like for you personally? Um, I think really emotional in some cool ways. It feels like yesterday that this all went down. It doesn't feel like we've had a whole off season. Like the first couple games of the year, I've been getting the heart palpitations that you're only supposed to get in the playoffs. I'm like, shut it off. It's too early for this. Um, but I think just seeing a lot of family members and especially old folks who waited such a long time, it's gonna be cool. But you know what's crazy? It's, it's obviously not a one-off. They're, they're built to win and handle the winning. Yeah. There's yeah. no complacency. I There's hope been so. a lot of drinking, a lot of partying, but no hangover. Uh, crazy. I, I, I get a hangover now. Yeah. I admittedly get a hangover now, but not a Cubs hangover. Yeah, exactly. Well, I was gonna say it's gotta feel like really good to open a season for your favorite team and know you're the champion. Like, oh yeah. How does that? I mean, are you stuck on people left and right in Chicago? All I'm over? trying to keep it chill because everyone's already accusing us of being Red Sox fans. Uh -oh. We haven't even had a home game yet. Like, <laughs> give us a minute to right. be excited after a century plus of losing and then we'll be we'll hopefully be good winners it's good to be in chicago you got blackhawks predators yeah. the bulls might get in as ac ways back i Tell mean you, yeah this is your town it's a good time 
Oh, well, uh, your town has definitely treated us well. Yes. We've enjoyed Excellent. ourselves. Shout enjoyed out these to the Love these fans. shirts. Best Love this. So choice. Baseball tonight at the home of the defending World Series champion Chicago Cubs Wrigley Field where they have been celebrating all day long outside heck a new building spawned <laughs> so have a lot of other things which we'll talk about on this hour long telecast but the Jumbotron reliving game seven of the World Series inside fans get a chance to see the 2017 edition and instead of asking what have you done for me lately and wait till next year Theo Epstein, the architect of this team, is now being asked, what can you do for us this year? They try to repeat like they once did. Only three in the National League have done it before. Tonight, though, it's about looking back and celebrating. It's really difficult to get to this position. It's why you play the whole season. You're one of the last two teams standing. These players have earned the right to try to see if we can beat the Cubs. The Chicago Cubs and the Cleveland Indians, the two teams with the longest droughts in baseball. Hanging breaking ball is hit a ton to left field and gone. What a night for Roberto Perez. The 2-2 swing and a miss, and the Indians win game one. And six strikeouts now through four and two-thirds for Arietta. Another hit and another RBI for Kyle Schwarber. And the Cubs win it. The World Series is even. It's going to be kind of game seven energy because they've waited 71 years to host a World Series in this city. The excitement throughout our city. The whole moment, I think, is spectacular. The RBI single by Chris has finally broken the ice. Swing and a miss, and Miller strikes out the side. He got him, and the Cleveland Indians have beaten the Chicago Cubs one to nothing. Three-run homer for Jason Pipnis. The Cleveland Indians have taken a three-to-one lead over the Cubs here in the World Series. Nothing changes. We'll show up and try to beat a really good pitcher tomorrow. We just need that offensive epiphany somehow. You get us pushing in the right direction. Swing and a fly ball, well hit. It's gone! will get a run home and the Cubs lead two to one. Chapman, the 0-2 pitch and a swing and a foul tip held by Contreras and the World Series is headed back to Cleveland. It's not about elimination as much as it is about winning tonight's game. This one's hit a long way. That's a grand slam. Russell blows it open. The Chicago Cubs have won nine to three. And that gets us to two of the best words in all of sports, game seven. This is as exciting a game as you could ever play. We've had a tremendous season. To cap it off tonight, it would be historic. And it's gone! Fowler with a leadoff home run! David Ross just homered off Andrew Miller. 6-3 Cubs. And a swing and a ball hit hard down the left field line. It's a tie game! Unbelievable! The rain has returned. The umpires have decided to delay things for the time being. And the RBI double has given the Cubs a 7-6 lead. So swing and a slow chopper toward third. Here comes Bryant on the first. And the Cubs have won the World Series for the first time in 108 years. It could not have been a more entertaining, difficult series to win. I don't even think it's really sunk in yet. I feel so fortunate to be a Chicago Cub right now. I'm so happy for this group and just very, very fortunate to be a part of it. What this means to the people, I think you can just see the joy in their faces. Let's hope that it's not another 108 years. Let's let's see if we can repeat this and come back next year. It happened, baby. It happened. Every single person that has worn this jersey, I feel like, won the World Series with us. David Ross will join us in a little while. He, of course, is now dancing with the stars. Here they're dancing and have been since that rainy night last October into November, December, and Chicago is ready for baseball again. There is tarp on the field. Hey, it rained during the... Seventh game of the World Series might rain again here a little bit tonight, but they expect to play and then they are off tomorrow and go again Wednesday tonight. They'll raise the banner Wednesday. They get their rings, which allegedly have like 108 diamonds in them <laughs> for their 108 year drought. But now they're trying to repeat. We get Tim Kirkshen here. Mark to share Buster only will join us in just a second. So you've been in this situation before home opener after you win a World Series. Can you kind of tell us what you think they're dealing with? Yeah, you, know, you look 
forward to this all off season. I mean, you tell your friends, you know, hey, make sure you come to the day when we get our rings, we, we raise the banner. These fans have been waiting for this for a long time, 108 years. You can, you can sense the pent up emotion that they've had all off season. They can't, get, they can't wait to get back to the ballpark. Right. And play again. Right, and here's how long it's been. The last time the Cubs played a home opener as a defending world champion, their leadoff guy was George Brown. He was born in 1876, right. and that was their leadoff guy, center fielder. That's how long it's been, and now 108 years later, here we are. That 1909 season, the Pirates beat the Tigers. Ty Cobb and Hannes Wagner played in that game. That's good for Tigers and Pirates in 2018 or 2017. This year, Schwarber will lead off, and of course, that's not permanent. In fact, the whole lineup isn't permanent the way Joe Madden has worked things. But Bryant went from Rookie of the Year to NL MVP to number two hitter and off to one of the worst starts anybody who's been an MVP could have. No panic, though, here in Chicago. There's the rest of the lineup. Our goal is to bring you the feel of what it is here at Wrigley tonight. Buster Olney joins us now. It's a little bit different looking, Wrigley, than it was when we last saw it, Buster. That's right, Carl. They renovated Wrigley Field during the wintertime. They took the bullpens off the field, and they put them beneath the stands in left center and right center field. And they've added about 500 seats. But the Cubs anticipate that because now you have the stands closer to the foul lines, you're going to see some crazy bounces on balls hit down the line, maybe a little bit like in Fenway Park when balls are hit down that left field line. And Chris Bazio, their pitching coach, has told me, they told the infielders, you have to be aggressive. They told the pitchers, you might have to be more involved, covering bases, being involved in relays. And by the way, that glass that's in front of the bullpens in left center and right center field, the Cubs coach was out earlier today throwing a ball against it. Guys, it's like a trampoline coming off that and the way it bounces back toward the infield. All right, Buster. Theo Epstein spent a lot of money, had a four or five year plan. It was ahead of schedule. The Cubs have about a $500 million plan, and part of that is the renovations. I don't know how much the rings cost, but that's certainly on the minds <laughs> of a lot of guys here. Yeah, it's got to be pricey. You mentioned 108 diamonds on each of these rings to signify each of the years between the Cubs championships. And when I asked some Cubs players about whether or not they're going to wear it, Dick Arrieta joked that, yeah, sometimes they probably wear it and put it in people's faces. But mostly players talked about how, no, they won't wear it that much. It's too gaudy. It's too shiny. But Mark knows all about this. Player after player after player said they cannot wait to see it when they're unveiled on Wednesday. It'll be pretty neat, and you probably have to wear sunglasses, Buster. Thank you. Word now for the Cubs, their fans, us included, and of course the telecast tonight. They have pushed back the opening ceremonies a little bit, so it gives us a little more time to talk about what we're seeing. Uh, so I just want to know if they win it next year, does the ring the following year only have one diamond? <laughs> like we haven't waited at all? Is That'd it, be one big diamond. That'd be it? a big diamond. 108 diamonds. You remember the ring? part of the whole thing. Oh, absolutely. I remember the ring. I remember the first time I wore the ring. I wear my wedding ring on my left hand. I put the ring on my right hand. I went to a charity event and I shook hands with about 500 people. My hand was so sore. I learned very quickly, you put the big gaudy ring on your non-shaking non, non right, shaking right, hand. Right. You learned. <laughs> Where is the ring now? Where do you keep it? The ring is in a safe at my house. I wear it once or twice a year. I mean, it, yeah. they are big. Do people uh, ask, hey, can I see it? Can I wear it? Can I touch it? People always ask me where it is. Like, I'll, you know, I'll be at the grocery store. Wait, where's the ring? I'm not ringing it. Where's right. my ring right now? You know, like I said, a couple times a year, big events. Sure. Um, you know, as I get older, I'll probably wear it a little bit more. What stood out about the ring? If there's 108 diamonds and that's unique, what's, what was unique about the well, ring? Well, for us, it was, it was the interlocking NY. I mean, that's one of the most iconic you know, symbols in all of sports and, you know, to have that NY on the ring and you can show people, they know exactly what it is as soon as they see it. Right. You know, there are 108 stitches on a baseball, too. Of course there are. Right. Cubs, 108 years. So you're just doing the whole 108 years sure. tie-in. Rings, diamonds, whatever. As we said last night, what a thing! <laughs> What a ring! What a ring! <laughs> Let's get to the Dodger lineup. They'd like to get a ring. Last time they, of course, were there was 88. They've been to the postseason a lot, but haven't won a World Series. They and the Cubs, LCS last year. 
And when you think about this version of the Dodgers, Corey Seager could try to do, and he's going to try to do what Bryant did, go rookie of the year and then MVP. Absolutely. And he's, uh, you know, he's come back from an injury this spring. It looks like everything's okay. They're facing John Lester, a lefty tonight. And this will be the challenge because right. last year, had the second lowest batting average of any team against lefties the last 40 years. And that's why Yaziel Puig is so important. I mean, right. This guy, when he first came up, we thought he'd be a perennial MVP candidate. He's showing it right now. This first week of the season, he's showing that he can be that guy. And like you said, the right-handed bat is so important in this lineup. One of those, that guy has just walked by us, Tom Ricketts, the owner, and that's why the loud applause is going on because he basically has done what he said he would do, which was kind of stay out of the on-field stuff, allow Epstein and company to do what they do, and he is a hero in Chicago. Right, and Carl, I talked to some people in the organization, and they say, we need a new spring training facility. It's going to cost whatever 300 million mr ricketts goes okay let's go let's go we need a new clubhouse they tell him how much it costs he says sounds a little pricey but let's do it and that's why this club one reason it's so good is they have a, an owner that is willing to spend and pretty good return on investment too though of course Absolutely. And, and players feel that when you know the guy up top has your back and he's actually listening to you when you ask for things that's very important to a player all right buster the uh, dodgers of course do have a lot of money if they choose to spend it it. These guys brought up this challenge of hitting lefties like Lester tonight. Have they addressed it? They try to for sure. And the number that Tim referenced, a 214 batting average for the Dodgers last year against lefties. So no surprise, this year other teams are lining up lefties to pitch to the Dodgers. For example, last week when the Cubs had a rain out, they flip flopped their rotation. So Jake Arrieta would pitch on Sunday against the Brewers and left-hander John Lester tonight. When we talked to Dave Roberts before, he said, we are going to be better against lefties. They went out and traded for Logan Forsythe. Other players have made adjustments. He talked about how Justin Turner, their third baseman, stepping more toward the left-hander in an effort to get better. So far this year, he's six for 13. A big test tonight, though, against Lester. I'm always curious, Buster. I don't know if the Dodgers have a game plan, but the Indians last year, when you get to see a team celebrate on the field, many players stand there. They watch it because they want to experience the same thing. Do the Dodgers have a game plan for either tonight or Wednesday, the ring ceremony? Dave Roberts' response was surprising to me. He said, hey, you know what? The best team won last year when the Cubs beat us. He said it was good for baseball. It was good for the city. And if we have a problem with it, then go out and beat them. And they feel confident that this year's team is better than last year's team's call. All right, Buster, thank you very much. It's getting loud here at Wrigley Field. Yeah. The song is called <laughs> At Last. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you very much, Tim. <laughs> Let's get to the game changer moment as we continue to talk Dodgers and Cubs. There were other games today. It's brought to you by LG G6, the big screen that fits in your hand. Affectionately known as Michael Pins, the Yankees today, and for a while, and he's had this before, he had perfect game stuff a long yeah. time. Michael Pineda is one of those guys that when you see him have a day like today, you go, why can't you do that every time <laughs> out? I mean, this guy's got a mate. Look at the break on those pitches. He throws 95, natural cut on his fastball, just hasn't been consistent. So Michael Pineda outstanding in the Yankees home opener. Today's game changer moment brought to you by LG G6, the big screen that fits in your hand. They are so ready for baseball to begin again here. It felt like the middle of the summer and now it feels like the fall, which brings us to David Ross. He danced last year, he's dancing now, and he'll join us as we continue on baseball tonight. Papa John's double play, two medium, two topping pizzas for only $6.99 each. A deal so big, it needs a replay. Double better ingredients means double better pizza. Papa John's double play, two medium, two topping pizzas for $6.99 each. Papa John's. Thompson's Water Seal, the seal you can trust. With stain and sealer in one and easy to choose colors, exceptional beauty and protection have never been easier. Thompson's Water Seal, stain and sealer, available at national retailers. Introducing the LG G6, the big screen that fits in your hand. Buy the LG G6 and get a Google Home on us, both with a Google Assistant built in. The sun will come out tomorrow. 
For people with heart failure, tomorrow is not a given. But Entresto is a medicine that helps make more tomorrows possible. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you, tomorrow. In the largest heart failure study ever, Entresto helped more people stay alive and out of the hospital than a leading heart failure medicine. Women who are pregnant must not take Entresto. It can cause harm or death to an unborn baby. Don't take Entresto with an ACE inhibitor or Alice gear. If you've had angioedema while taking an ACE or ARB medicine, don't take Entresto. The most serious side effects are angioedema, low blood pressure, kidney problems, or high potassium in your blood. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you, tomorrow. Ask your doctor about Entresto and help make tomorrow possible. You're only a day away. NBA Playoffs starts Saturday on ESPN and ABC. Four distinct driving modes. Dynamic handling. Quicker shifts. Make every car a performance car. This is the ultra-responsive Acura TLX, and this is how we make it. Visit your local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. and play. Nintendo Switch. Games rated RP to E. Get ready. The next Little League season is starting soon. But you can't play unless you're on the team. Now, finding your town's league is just a click away. To register or start a league, go to playlittleleague.org. Egg hunts are fine, but at Outback, we hunt for steak. For two weeks only, it's the Great Aussie Steak Hunt. Come in, scratch off our Aussie egg, and you could win free Outback for an entire year. We're giving away thousands of other prizes, and everyone wins something, so hurry in. Baseball Tonight is brought to you by Novartis and the LG G6. The big screen that fits in your hand. Wow. My first game is when they open up as World Series champions. What a memory for dad and daughter. And tickets hard to come by. Tickets very expensive, too, for the World Series champions. As you see the Wrigley Field sign that has become famous, and they certainly hope it's going to happen again. If it does happen again, it's going to happen without David Ross, who in a lot of ways was the inspirational leader. And now he is a member of the Baseball Tonight cast, but currently doing Dancing with the Stars. I'd just really like to ask, David, since we haven't really seen you in person, I mean, how surreal, like, the last year of your life has been to go from kind of part-time catcher, leader, walk into restaurant, standing ovation, World Series champion, hero, dancing with the stars guy. I mean, did you ever think that was even remotely possible? No, I, it, I don't. And it, it's, I brush my teeth there every morning asking my, myself, who, who are you? I don't even know that guy anymore. <laughs> it's been, uh, it's been ridiculous. I, it's just so many great things have happened to me from, from, you know, all those things you mentioned to being on this show, representing Major League Baseball, to being on with you guys. Uh, I'm super jealous that you guys at Wrigley Field right now getting ready for opening night. Uh, feels like, feels like uh, I'm missing out on something right now. Well, you are missing out on something, but you're in a good place, and you'll certainly be here Wednesday for the ring ceremony. T tell me what, what the communication has been like between you and your buddies on the team, and what, what are your emotions, whether you're missing this or obviously happy for them? What are you feeling right now? A little bit of both. I, I, miss, I miss the guys. I miss the camaraderie. They've uh, sent me some videos. They had a team dinner uh, before my last routine, and they were all watching at the team dinner on Monday night. They had off. 
after the opener with St. Louis. And so they sent me uh, some videos. They're all <laughs> laughing and commenting. And uh, I've had Rizzo come to my practice, uh, which was fun, my rehearsal in Arizona, and it was fun to teach him some some moves before uh, before I went on last week. And but I miss the guys. I miss that that competitiveness. I miss being in the dugout. Uh, the high fives, guys go deep. I'm just like, I'm at home texting them, just like, way right. to swing it, Ben Zobris. I'm like, you rake. He's hit, he's hit a couple homers already. So uh, all those guys, I'm just just trying to keep in touch with them and uh, keep that keep that uh, memory going for me. No, I know you're flying overnight. We look forward to seeing you here. I know the Cub fans are looking forward to seeing you as well. There's a lot of a lot of Ross shirts in the stands here, David. Good luck tonight. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right. So we just heard Anthony Rizzo, of course, uh, was there. Is that Rizzo or Kirchin? <laughs> no, that's Rizzo. <laughs> he went. You always say baseball is the hardest thing in the world to do. I, I think this might be right up there on the list. Although the, the instructor looks like she's certainly helping out Rizzo. And Anthony gets a high five. It is not easy. Ross and Rizzo in the same place. Time now for a little all access. Jen Lotta with Anthony Rizzo from the World Series to today. This is Essie Featured. This is the power of sports. We're at the beach and I'm saying to myself, keep going, keep pushing, did we do enough work? Am I working hard enough? Good, you did that plan. I'm not satisfied. And I always try to push myself to do more. Two, three. I love it here because it's so quiet. So, parents live there. Brother lives the next neighborhood over. And I live just around the corner. It's like the old Italian Northeast thing. It's not like crazy, as in you go to Chicago and it's just everywhere you go, people know who you are. That's why I love coming home. It's just you get away from the limelight and just be able to decompress. 27-year-old all-star first baseman Anthony Rizzo has a lot to decompress from. For the first time in 108 years, the Chicago Cubs are World Series champions. Last November, he helped the Cubs make history. Like most little leaguers, winning a World Series was always a goal. And as a kid, Anthony was always setting goals. Dad, allowed? Three years old, riding a bike, what a guy. When he learned to ride a bike, he was three. He, there was no way he was coming in the house until he could ride that bike. As a child, I would see someone doing something and I would want to do it too, and I would want to do it better. Baseball has never been a priority. It was never like a thing that I had to do. It was just something I loved to do. Watch the pop-up, you guys. I bought him a pitching machine when he was five. Oh, he almost died. He wanted to be a catcher. He was a lefty catcher. This is not child abuse. He turned his head a lot. So I said, you want to be a catcher, you can't turn your head. So the pitching machine only went 60 miles an hour. So the next day, I duct taped him to the, to the fence where all his catchers would be on. He shot balls to his helmet. So after that, he wouldn't turn his head. You see him now, World Series champion, gold gloves, silver slugger. Everybody just thinks, oh, it's just there for him. He, he's fought for a lot of stuff that he's got. He's been knocked down a lot. In 2007, Anthony was drafted out of high school by the Boston Red Sox. The following spring, while playing for the Sox single-A team in Greenville, South Carolina, his life changed. I'm playing baseball. I just got a signing bonus. I was 18 years old. I was invincible. And boom, cancer, you're shut down. It was probably the worst day of my life, the worst feeling, the worst, the worst call you could ever get as a parent. To hear those words were just, it, 
it just wasn't real. In the beginning, he was scared, but he handled it really well, and he noticed how crazy everybody else was going. He would be strong for us. I really just think that it was the competitor in me. Every other week, chemo, I'm not gonna feel good for a few days. It's not the end of the world. From the second that I was a quote unquote cancer patient, I said to everyone, do not treat me like that. Treat me the same. Let's go, everyone. Go Cubs, go. Anthony has been cancer free from Hodgkin's lymphoma for eight years. But the disease is never far from his mind. This past December, the Rizzo Family Foundation held its fifth annual Rizzo Walk-Off for Cancer in Parkland. The foundation, started in 2012, has raised more than $2.5 million in the fight against cancer. When people get hurt and get sick, and I try to show them, you know, sympathy, but then treat them like they're normal, because that's exactly what I want. What do you have that Anthony has? Oh, we're in the same club. If you want to be a great organization, you have to have your best players be your best people as well. And Anthony helps us accomplish that. I was here for Halloween. Were you? Yeah. Did you wear eye black? Uh, yeah, I did. Nice. <laughs> Anthony appreciates all his fans in Chicago. Color pencil sketch? No way. Nice work. But just like baseball, there's a desire to get home. The champ is here. The champ is here. This is where a champion was built. His perseverance comes from mom. His sense of humor from dad. His competitiveness from his big brother, Johnny. A lot of people don't get the opportunity that I was given, and I had the right support system at a young age to be able to take advantage of the opportunities. And all that success, a product of both his family and his lifelong home, Parkland. How have you been able to stay close with so many people from this area as your life has gotten increasingly hectic? That's not easy to do. We have friendships where I don't, I don't need to see people for seven, eight months, two years, and then I see them, and it's like picking up right where we left off. Come on, one time, one part for the cameras. Oh, better luck next year. Can you make another bet that we beat you on the last four holes? Very grateful because the brother that I have and the parents that I have, they always put everyone first. That is what helped me become who I am now. I'm very lucky. Amongst the most popular of all the Cubs, Anthony Rizzo, Chris Bryant, together they've uh, worked on marketing the whole Brizzo thing, and in a lot of ways, he's a reflection of his parent. Two terrific people have had a chance to speak with often, and now Anthony Rizzo, remember his travels here. I mean, he was a Red Sox, and then he went to San Diego, and Jed Hoyer was in San Diego, and Hoyer and Epstein were together in Boston. They end up together here, and of course, they bring Anthony Rizzo. You've dealt with Theo Epstein before. What does it say about Rizzo that Epstein wanted him basically everywhere he went. You know, Epstein believed in his talent right away. You see a lot of young players, it takes a while for them to get going. You know, Rizzo had a success right away, but he was traded twice. I mean, how do you trade a guy like that twice before he and makes struggled the big in San Diego. You know? Like he struggled a little bit. Absolutely. And you know, he makes his makes his, his mark here in Chicago and now he's he's helping carry the team. And that's why he's well grounded, is he has failed on the major league level, right. even for a small portion. And this spring I saw him early, of course. And when the last thing he said to me, he said, the next 40 days, I'm going to have to figure out how to hit in the big leagues again. Meaning, he didn't just show up thinking, we're going to win again and I'm going to be a really good player. He knows the process is really hard. And the next 40 days of spring training, we're trying to find a swing and get him ready. I did the same thing every spring training. I showed up to spring training having to relearn how to hit. And that sounds crazy, right? But you take four months off of hitting a baseball. It's not like jump shots or you know, swinging a golf club. Right. You haven't seen 95 at your hands. You haven't seen a big curveball. You have to relearn your swing, relearn your timing. 
And Rizzo's very honest. This is a tough game to yep. play. You know, you have ups and downs. That's what you love about him, that he'll come out and tell you. He's very honest and very willing to speak. He's not one of those guys that you can't, he's very accessible. I mean, that speaks to his personality. I'm curious from a first baseman. You know, Anthony Rizzo comes up with the clutch hits. He's got that personality, but a defensive position at first base that you played. What is your opinion about him as a player? You know, great all-around player. I mean, this is a guy when, when the ball's thrown over to him at first base, his entire infield feels really good because you're not going to be perfect. You're going to be, you know, throwing balls in the dirt, throwing balls up the line, and Rizzo's a guy that works the bag very well. He makes his entire infield better. Yeah. Right, and he's got a great sense of humor, which yes. we've seen. The, the commercials with Chris Bryant are just priceless, and last spring, Bryant told me, Rizzo's learning to play the piano. He's terrible, but he's <laughs> trying, and I asked him again this spring, because we saw him playing in that piece. I said, you getting any better at the piano? He goes, no, I still stink at it, but at least he's, <laughs> he's trying. trying. He's a very human guy. Among the greatest shots last year during the World Series was when Rizzo put his arm around Ross and says, what, what do we do now? <laughs> what, what, is, what do we do? Calm me down. I can't there, stop my heart from There's me. a lot of doubt in the game of baseball. You see you know, another team out there you know, doing their thing. You're down 3-1. You're, you're down in a game, and you go, right. wait a second. Is this, is this really going to happen? Right. Amazing. And by the way, great support. He went out and was there with David Ross. He may not know how to play the piano. He's trying. He may not know how to dance. <laughs> He's there with him. Hi, right, Tim. I mean, one thing we've seen, whether it be the Yankees or the Red Sox, the Seattle Mariners today, opening day, especially when you're raising a banner, is about its past. And that's where you got right. sitting There's in that the past there. Billy Williams, Ryan Sandberg, and Fergie Jenkins, of course. Jenkins, people forget, even though he's a Hall of Famer, how great a pitcher he was. 300 innings, amazing control. Sandberg, of course, one of the most elegant second basemen you'll ever meet. 84, 1984 MVP and sweet swinging right. Billy Williams with Williams, Santo, and Banks together, especially in their prime in the 60s. Really, really good. Every pitcher has a goal of 200 innings to start the season. Right. <laughs> 300 <laughs> innings. You blow by that by 100 they, innings. They don't do that anymore. I'm not even me. sure 200 is the goal anymore. <laughs> Great, great history here, and unfortunately, not great weather. That's what it looks like downtown Chicago. It is, uh, it's raining somewhere, not far from where we're at, but they are going to have opening ceremonies at roughly the top of the hour in the game, and all else has been pushed back. It is really hard to communicate to people who are sitting at home and enjoying this on television. The temperature drop we've experienced in the last 30 <laughs> minutes is bizarre. It was 75 degrees, and now it's about 55 degrees, a 20-degree drop in no time. Yeah, the players aren't happy about this. Right? I'm sure not, <laughs> but the fans don't care. They've waited long enough. Let's do it. Let's do it regardless of the weather. Hour 17, the Cubs home opener as we continue bringing you the celebration that was 2016 and getting set for 2017. And the other teams looking to make it a World Series run this year. We'll have highlights from other opening days as we continue on baseball tonight at Wrigley Field. Scott's Easy Seed changes everything. Our finest grass seed plus quick start fertilizer and natural super absorbent mulch grow grass anywhere. Guaranteed. This is a Scott's Yard. Okay, Sal, so who is really the best? From around here? Johnny Matarazzo, five foot three center, average 57 tonight. Ronnie DeRosa, the big D, he put a dollar on the top of the backboard, brought back change. Vinny DiBiazio scored 125 points in one half on crutches. I was there. Vinny D was awesome. He was unbelievable. He was the PT Pier. He was the three S man. He was Is that even good? High riser. He did it. No all. clue. Heroes make every game better. The Subway Italian Hero. Perfect for game day. It's hard to resist great taste. It has to be Heinz. 
knowing where you stand. It's never been easier. Except when it comes to your retirement plan. But at Fidelity, we're making retirement planning clearer. And it all starts with getting your Fidelity retirement score. In 60 seconds, you'll know where you stand. And together, we'll help you make decisions for your plan to keep you on track. It's your retirement. Know where you stand. Hi, I'm Paul. I switched to Sprint because all networks are great. We're talking within a 1% difference in reliability of each other. With Sprint's unlimited plan and my amazing iPhone 7, I've got all the data I need to learn the things I want to do. Fourth video today. Good thing I don't have to worry about overages. Unlimited. $30 per month per line for four lines. Plus, get the awesome iPhone 7 on us. And with iPhone Forever exclusively from Sprint, you can upgrade to the latest iPhone. Let's just say it's been a big year for the Brizzo Souvenir Company. That's another sale! More home runs means one thing. Expansion. We're looking at any and all opportunities for growth. We need a jingle. Long gone home run, this one's gonna go. Kiss it goodbye, that ball was Brizzo! Only one thing can get us where we need to be. Yeah! Interns. Don't trip it. You got it. We put the ding in dingers. Attention Medicare beneficiaries. Many people with Medicare may be able to get extra benefits and don't even know they're available. You may be able to get dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage included in your plan. The Medicare Coverage Helpline is accepting calls to see if you're eligible to enroll now. You may be able to get extra benefits including dental, vision, and prescription drug coverage. Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Buckwald. Making sure you go to the doctor and taking all your medications as prescribed can help protect your health. To make it easier, you may now be able to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan that includes coverage for dental, vision, and prescription drugs. Help protect your health by choosing the right plan for you and get all the benefits you deserve. Call to see if you may be able to get extra benefits, including dental, vision, and prescription coverage. Don't delay. Call to see if you're eligible to enroll and may be able to get extra benefits now. Call 800-773-3500. That's 800-773-3500. Welcome back to Wrigley Field and Warner Run. Everybody in Scotts presents Pitch, Hit, and Run. Boys and girls ages 7 to 14 participate for free and get a chance to participate in the finals at this year's All-Star Game. Pitch, Hit, and Run. We don't have any of that going on right now, but we will. The temperature has dropped precipitously here, although that doesn't seem to affect any of the fans that have come out, and there are several thousand more outside the ballpark here at Wrigley. You can see the skies, and the good news is, if you uh, look up at the skies, every 10 minutes it changes dramatically. You haven't seen the light sun that we just saw there in the background. And baby with the red cheeks because it is cold and the wind is to text brought up if the wind's blowing in which it is right now <laughs> This really stinks for a hitter. Oh, yeah, I don't mind if it's cold if the wind's blowing out if it's cold the wind's blowing in You might need to get a pinch hitter for me nightmare <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the other highlights and we promise you will miss nothing with regards to the opening ceremonies earlier today Tampa Bay and New York you know what Michael Pineda is capable of, and everybody has seen the good and the bad. Today, this was the great. This was the great Pineda. I mean, takes a, a perfect game into the seventh inning. Yankee fans got to be really happy to see that one. Now, how do you establish consistency? How do you make sure that this happens more and more? I don't know. I mean, whatever he did today pregame, just do that every start. I'm not sure if it was the preparation, if it was what he ate, but whatever it was, it was working today. David Cohn was actually calling the game for the Yes Network. He went back to the David Wells perfect game and said after that, Wells actually became a better, more consistent pitcher. Perhaps hopeful thinking for somebody that works for Yes, but maybe something like this right. can help. Well, Michael Pineda is a great athlete. People forget that. He can really cover first and do things like that. He's got to get himself in great physical shape if he's going to do this all the time because he tends once in a while to run out of gas late because he's not in the best shape he can be in. Well, Evan Longoria and the rest kind of tipped their hat to Pineda. That was what broke up the perfect game, and then he gets another strikeout. So Michael Pineda on the mound was the biggest story for the Yankees. You take a look at what he did 
since July 1st of last year. None of the numbers great, but better at home. And again, this was the home opener for the Yankees, and it worked out well for Pineda and all the fans. And there was a lot of offense for a long time. He was pitching, and the game was close. It was 2-0. But there were a bunch of runs scored. And if you haven't seen this guy, I mean, we <laughs> saw Giancarlo Stanton last night. Aaron Judge is enormous. I want to see Aaron Judge get 500 at-bats this year, hit 30 home runs, and establish himself as an everyday big league starter. I mean, this guy's got the power. He can play right field. Love to see that. I mean, you're a big guy. He's huge, right? He's 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 mammoth. He's, he's six mammoth. he's six seven, two eighty. Wooly mammoth. <laughs> Chase Headley went yard. Castro goes the other way. The Yankees hit three homers today, and this is obviously going to have to be a part of the script. If they're going to do anything, they're going to have to go out of that yard. So the Yankees win it eight to one. Judge goes two for four with a home run, like some other teams are dealing with injuries, but not a not a dramatic amount of changes other than Bird is back, and hopefully he gets healthy again. Judge is going to play. They got Castro there. Gregorius is hurt. Is this a competitive team when healthy? When healthy, but you know you don't like to see Gary Sanchez go down for right. four weeks. Bicep, that's that's, yep. that's terrible news. You know he hurt his bicep against the Orioles, yep. and the Yankee fans were just so looking forward to watching Gary Sanchez play every day and hit 40 home runs maybe. But you know you, you got to wonder how he's going to come back from an injury like this. Right, and maybe he won't hit 40 homers this year. But this year, for me at least, for the Yankees, is about building for next year, and it's about building for. 2019 to me it's a miracle your team made the playoffs two years ago as they were rebuilding that team it's a miracle you contended last year and I think the plan all along is to be really good in 2018 and then once the great free agent year comes be really really good in 2019 I had a front row seat for Gary Sanchez last year and it was laughable what he was doing at the plate I mean, we, we were joking around like it's like he's playing backyard wiffle ball right. you know where every other swing is a home run you kind of play home run derby he was playing home run derby with big league pitching right. something you don't see today no and you guys just talked about how hard it is to come back after four months off he'd never been in the big leagues showed up and absolutely killed it but now out about a month with a bicep injury all right so the yankees maybe still rebuilding the red sox in a total go forward mode and what a pitching matchup <laughs> chris sale left justin verlander right verlander is totally back he is. He was great again today. He he was great last year. And even though he's not throwing 100 miles an hour in the ninth inning, he still gets it over 95 once in a while. Chris Sale's going to wonder where all the support is. He didn't get any of it today, but boy, was he dealing. And for a long time, it was going to be which of the pitchers makes the first mistake. Let's go to the sixth inning and see if that's when it happened. Sale to Kinsler. Boston up one zip. Boom. Kinsler's got his power back. You know, uh, last year he really made an uh, effort to get some more strength, worked really hard in the offseason, and it's paying off. And then later, while Sale was on the mound, you could see John Farrell get together with his pitching coach, and they waited perhaps a batter too long. That ball down the line and left. It's good for a double. A walk, and this is where the conversation started, and it's the Castellanos who's coming up. And this guy has been pretty clutch for them so far this season, and he is again. He delivers a single and plates the go-ahead run. He had a better year last year, Castellanos, and they told me, Brad Osmus, it was a different look to him when spring training began. This is what he said after the game. Chris has been pitching great all game, and uh, just looking at something I can get the barrel to, and I like the first one I saw. Great team, phenomenal organization, so to take three is fun. Up until the end. I felt like I was able to command my pitches, um, throw them all for strikes. Again, you know, just really leaning on Sandy back there to kind of get me through this one. And uh, wish I wish I could have pulled it in at the end, but um, that's how it goes sometimes. Not sure if you saw the numbers, but again, two listen, two earned runs, 17 strikeouts, and an 0-1 record. <laughs> That's impossible. Right. This was not supposed to happen when you go play for the Red Sox, who scored 100 run, 101 more runs than anyone else in the league. But this will even out, and if he keeps throwing like he's done his first two starts, he'll have a great you think, year. A better offense, but this is deja yeah. vu all over again for a guy that pitched with the White Sox and didn't get much support. 
Sale, very good. Tigers, excellent. And they get the win. And Verlander was superlative. Once again, feels like winter has descended here in Chicago <laughs> with Mark Teixeira and Tim Kirchin. The opening ceremonies will take place. The Cubs and Dodgers expected to play tonight. But I mean, having done these games for 20 some odd years, I don't ever remember a drop in temperature as we've experienced. It says it all over the place here, but you can certainly see it in the breath coming out of our mouths and the fans all bundled up. Right. I didn't see this coming, but maybe this is appropriate. This is Chicago in April. It's always cold here, and the Cubs have known for these cold weather Aprils. They might as well do this big ceremony when it's Chicago weather. Right. Well, at least we know it's really warm and toasty where Dan, Jess, and Aaron are. We can see you guys. I, I know it's nice and warm up there. I got a blanket. <laughs> Uh, spoken like a guy who's going to be in the trailer watching the game a little bit later on tonight. Yeah, uh, Carl, as you say, it's just as cold up here as it is down there. The temperatures dropped about 30 degrees in the last hour, it feels. They will have a ceremony and the baseball game tonight, but it is going to be delayed. There's a threat of weather. There was heavy rain before. We don't know when the bad weather's coming in or how bad it's going to be, but we do know that a lot of people are tremendously excited for what they're going to see tonight, 108 years in the making. You know, Dan, just walking around Wrigleyville about an hour ago, went over to the Cubby Bear, walking through the crowds. I mean, there's one thing about Chicago fans is it, it might be cold, it might be raining, but they are enjoying this and they are anticipating this entire, the World Series banner raising, the fact that they get to celebrate this team for the first time at home. This has been a long time coming. It, it is a privilege for us to be here. And you said the word celebrate. Yeah, they won the World Championship last year, but they didn't get to do it here at Wrigley Field. And all that anticipation, there's angst that goes in. It's a done deal now. Yeah. This is all about coming here and celebrating this team from a year ago. And to watch that banner go up, I would imagine we'll see tears in people's eyes in the stands here at Wrigley. Everybody knows how old Wrigley Field is, but it's not old enough to have been the Cubs ballpark the last time <laughs> they won the World Series, which of course was 1908. Wrigley opened in 1914. What was going on the last time that the Cubs had a ceremony to raise a World Series banner? If you go back to 1908, the whole team hit 19 home runs. Wow. Dead ball era, not a lot of power. <laughs> last year they hit 199. Salaries have gone up just a bit here and there. Napoleon Lajouet was the highest paid player of the Indians, $8,500. Zach Greinke just nosed him out with his salary last year. As we mentioned, Wrigley Field was not the home ballpark of the Cubs the last time they won the World Series. It was West Side Park. Cubs winning the World Series with West Side Park, their home in both 07 and 08. And the average ticket cost to get in was 25 cents then. It's a little bit pricier now. But I don't think anybody who's in this ballpark tonight is complaining about anything ticket price or anything else because they are so excited they've been waiting decades generations this is for their parents grandparents their kids multi generations are here tonight to celebrate the World Series banner raising ceremony for the Chicago Cubs which is coming up a later a little bit later on tonight we've also got a baseball game for you tonight the Dodgers are here the team that the Cubs knocked off in the NLCS last year left hander Alex Wood filling in for Rich Hill who's on the DL with a blister and John Lester the uh, co MVP of the National League Championship Series and the NL Cy Young runner up from a year ago will make his second start of the season for the Cubs when this game gets going but for now let's send it back down to the field again to Carl. All right Dan thank you very much and I'm sure uh, back in 1908 1909 uh, Reynolds wrap wasn't uh, sponsoring the tarp that's on the field. <laughs> yeah pretty sure that wasn't happening either. That's the Jumbotron as they uh, take a look back to games from last year. This is the NLCS game the Cubs and the Dodgers and of course a rematch of those Tonight, you heard Dan and Jess and Aaron talk about it walking around Wrigleyville. I mean, last year, and even during the middle of the summer during a three game series with the Mets, no matter the ballparks you go to, you've seen it in four of them. People wear their team's logos, their team's colors, Cardinals certainly in all red. But I had not seen a place in which there was more of a particular team color than I did at Wrigley. The blue that you see here is like Kentucky Wildcats when they travel as a basketball program. Everybody in the city was wearing blue last year. It's a cool sight. I mean, you know, there's a lot of ballparks you go to that there's a mix of away fans and home fans. Not, not here. 
you know, you see blue everywhere. You see the fans outside before the game, inside the park. They're here early. They're, it's, it's like a rock concert every night. Right. Here. It's like a kiss concert Speaking every night of at Wrigley. Rock, your guy, Eddie Vedder, and you were, ch did, did you give him some tips on what? Yeah, I want to give a little tips. He was working right. on that D chord, you know, wanted to just kind of Good show, show him how I play mine. <laughs> that was oh a joke, Jimmy. <laughs> So we were here last year for the World Series, of course. So it's the first World Series game played at Wrigley since 1945. And I got to the ballpark at 7 o'clock in the morning to do TV. And the place was, was filled around the stadium with people trying to get in and just trying to get into a bar where you had to pay to go to the bar and sit at a table. Then you had to buy all your stuff. Point is, I've never seen anything like that. And when we arrived at 7, our driver said, those people got here at 4 o'clock in the morning. Four an 8 o'clock game. It right. was amazing. Remember right. when they were talking about the Cubs wouldn't be able to win because they played too many day games? Right. Now, if you pulled players in Major League Baseball anonymously, right. where they would want to play, we'll right. Sign up it's for right that. here. Yeah. No doubt. It's right here in Chicago. I was going to bring up that point about being a champion because when the Red Sox ended their curse, there was this, this sort of we've just peeled back the layer and now what are we going to be exposed to? Are they going to care? Are they going to be as passionate? Well, well, they were and then they won two more. I certainly get no impression that that's going to change here either. Right. And what Mark was saying is what an attractive place this is. They're going to rebuild the visiting clubhouse right. in the next few years. They're building a hotel out there. They redid the playing surface. They redid the bullpens. And right behind home plate, they're going down 25 feet and building a bar restaurant down underneath. Yeah, a bar, perfect for me, of course, right? right? And, of course. <laughs> and and it's, so they're going to give the fans somewhere else to go. It's going to be, this place five years from now is going to be way more spectacular than it is now. Right. All right, as the fans wait, and we all do for opening ceremonies here on opening night for the Chicago Cubs, want to get you up to date on some other action from today and some uh, unsettling action for the San Francisco Giants off to a rough start and this was really bad Buster Posey took on right off the helmet and of course he's a catcher uh, so if anybody is accustomed to getting hit by a baseball not there for sure good news is Posey got up and left the game under his own power but man that's scary yeah I mean, you said it Carl I mean, catchers are definitely used to get hit in the head but you still don't like seeing it uh, Meantime, the Mets and the Phillies the night after Noah Syndergaard pitched really well, and the Mets got a victory. Tonight, Jacob deGrom down. They took a bus last night from New York to Philadelphia, and they are down two zip. Bottom of the second, Adam Eaton, one of the new Nats, delivers a game-tying RBI as they battle the St. Louis Cardinals. You saw Dexter Fowler throw the ball in from center field. He, of course, was a center fielder for the Chicago Cubs. All right, the rest of our week schedule, Tuesday, 7 Eastern time. It'll be that game, St. Louis and Washington. Harper, good start. And Sunday night, we'll be back in the Bronx. That's where the Cardinals will travel next as they deal with the New York Yankees as they continue their opening homestand. So a little Cardinals to follow the Cubs here on Tuesday and on Sunday. We will continue here at Wrigley Field getting set for the Chicago Cubs as they raise the banner. And there is a huge love affair here with the team. The curse is over. Broken forever. No longer the underdog. These young Cubs are now mature with experience. Will they continue their domination? Introducing the LG G6, the big screen that fits in your hand. Buy the LG G6 and get a Google Home on us, both with a Google Assistant built in. Thompson's Water Seal, the seal you can trust. With stain and sealer in one and easy to choose colors, exceptional beauty and protection have never been easier. Thompson's Water Seal, stain and sealer, available at national retailers. I'm Vern, the orange money retirement rabbit from Voya. I'm the money you save for retirement. Who's he? 
he's green money for spending today. Easy to tell you apart. That and I am better looking. I heard that. When it's time to get organized for retirement, it's time to get Voya. Every time it's too nice out to be a work day, but Corona gets its line. And every time you decide a Tuesday should feel like a Saturday, but Corona gets its line. Every time you've got a view like that, or every time the best seat in the house isn't in the house. Every time the stars come out to play, or you dance the night away, a Corona gets its line. And every time you put that away, a Corona gets its line. This is Brooks Yard with ugly bear spots. But Scott's Easy Seed changes everything. Our finest grass seed, plus quick start fertilizer and natural super absorbent mulch grow grass anywhere. Guaranteed. This is a Scott's Yard. Papa John's double play. Two medium, two topping pizzas for only $6.99 each. A deal so big, it needs a replay. Double better ingredients means double better pizza. Papa John's double play. Two medium, two topping pizzas for $6.99 each. Papa John's. It's hard to resist great taste. It has to be Heinz. Confidence never goes out of style. Introducing the redesigned 2017 Kia Cadenza. Remember your first throw, your first try, your first team. It all starts with T. Little League T Ball. Find your league now at playlittleleague.org. This season on baseball, it all comes down to 0.4 seconds. Point four will annihilate records. Point four will silence the doubters and bring a city to its knees. Point four might just make you famous. Point four. The time these guys have to turn on a 95 mile an hour fastball. That's this season on baseball. Adrian Peterson's a souped up Frank Gore? Have you lost your mind? You act like Frank Gore is a bum. You should be ashamed. I, I swear I'd throw this tea on you if I could. The debate starts here. First take, weekdays at 10 on ESPN. All right. Welcome back to Wrigley, everybody. The weather apparently taking a uh, slight turn for the worse here. But again, they do plan on having opening ceremonies and game tonight. We will keep you updated for sure. But as you take a look at the fans, you're reminded that the success of the 2016 Cubs has spawned a new generation of fans, like literally spawned them. There are statistics that show pregnancies go up about 16 percent in the aftermath of a title, which seems logical. Win a title, make a baby, <laughs> which means right about now we or they are about six months in. You can do it. And these fans are going wild. We're on the home stretch. You can't make it up. Keep pushing. But you gotta believe. Don't give up. How you feeling right now? Push, 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 push. My son was born during game seven of the World <laughs> Series, and they're like, what? You can do this, you can do this. Yes, yes, yes. The game starts, and Matt is up here by my head, and my mom's here being the actual real-time supporter as Matt is totally looking around at the TV. I put it on mute. <laughs> One of the most vivid moments, I just remember getting ready to push. Out of the corner of my eye, I see the screen, and then I realize, oh crap, they've just tied it up. Davis drives with a deep left down the line in the corner. That ball is a home run. I was just like, heart sink and then I just turned and I'm just like <laughs> I guess maybe it's not meant to be and I just like I'm just gonna focus on having this baby we find out oh my goodness we just welcomed a beautiful healthy baby boy and we hadn't decided on his name so that's kind of hanging over us I've always liked Ben Zobrist and 
Then he comes up and hits that double down the line. The go-ahead run will score. Double for Sobras. Cubs lead 7-6. I'm just standing next to her, and then I actually look and I say, hey, what about Ben? We named our son Benjamin Matthew Jansen after the MVP player, Benjamin Zobre. And the Cubs have won the World Series for the first time in 108 years. The Chicago Cubs are World Series champions. They win the game less than an hour after he's born. It's like, yeah, of course he's a good luck child. <laughs> As he gets older, hopefully he'll understand how awesome and cool it is that he has such a special birthday. It happened game seven on that night. <laughs> it was a great, great night. It was an amazing feeling. Came home and uh, hit a home run. <laughs> <laughs> just went to a local bar, and I, I went with my father, uh, my brother, and uh, a good buddy of mine. I was at home because I think I had to work the next day. When the Cubs won the World Series, it was nuts. I cried like a baby, and my buddies still make fun of me for that. I literally texted him and said, come home, let's make a baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I cried a little bit. I, I couldn't stop staring at the TV. We had a champagne bottle that we had on reserve, just in just in case. Um, and it was great that when we... When the inevitable needed. happens. <laughs> yeah. It was great that we needed it. We finished the champagne. Cubs! Cubs win! <laughs> and, and then we went upstairs uh, to go to bed, because that's what you do uh, late at night. Um, but but we stayed up longer. Uh, <laughs> we, we celebrated. Uh, it, was a, it, was, it was the best... It was the best, uh, right? Like, it was a great, great night. Um, and, it, and we just it carried on. <laughs> to be completely honest, I was on birth control. So I thought there was no way that I was pregnant. I had been feeling a little bit off. So I walked back into the back room, and then she was just holding this pregnancy test. So I was like, well, it had to have been the Cubs winning the World Series, because they're, like, it doesn't make any sense, <laughs> you know? Girls, do you have any guesses? What do you think, brother? No. You think it's gonna be blue? All right, really? should we find out? What do you think, ladies? It's pink. Pink! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> A sister! Yay! We kind of had an ongoing joke. If they win the World Series, we're gonna try to have a baby. But I don't know if we actually thought we would end up having a baby. Right away. <laughs> <laughs> we're having a boy. Yeah, we're having a boy. We're having a boy. A boy. I'm gonna see what it's like to actually Cultivate a Cubs fan from birth now. <laughs> if he comes out of sacks, man, I'll lose my mind. <laughs> we have something so tangible to remember uh, the World Series win yeah. by. <laughs> Maybe if the Cubs didn't win the World Series, we wouldn't have this little kiddo. Mm. <laughs> nice. Good. I can't even find words for it. It was just the best time of my life. Without you guys pulling through and coming back and making history, my baby wouldn't be here today. I like to think I played a role in it, too, though. Yeah, that was mainly the Cubs. Uh, you know, <laughs> Cubs and me. Well, we have seen rain, and then it got nicer, and then really now the clouds have gotten darker, and the sky's a little more ominous. So as we get set for opening ceremonies, we have some time before they begin. We're going to send it from here at Wrigley back to Bristol. That's where Chris Cotter and Dallas Braden will bring you around the majors, and we promise back to Wrigley as soon as the ceremonies begin. All right, thanks, Ravi. Yeah, the weather was looking okay there for a little while. They had the tarp down, but it was looking like they might be able to get it in. They will get it in at some point in time, but it's going to be delayed a little bit in Chicago. Chris Cotter, Dallas.